Well, Charlie, we've never reviewed a rabbit hole whiskey, but now we have. Yeah, finally we got something from those guys new. Uh, rabbit holes made some uh, made a name for themselves. They got a great facility down in Louisville. Louisville, right? I said that right? Yeah, and uh, we didn't get to go there last time we were there. We did But not. they got big plans for this brand, so stick around and find out all about it. Because it could be the first lady of whiskey history, Mary Dolly. Oh, yeah. Hi, right, welcome to this week's edition of What's New at Charlie's. Well, this week at Charlie's, we have two whiskeys. Uh, Mary Dowling. Mary Dowling is a famous bootlegger, per se. I guess you could call her a boot. She was distiller. Distiller, yeah. Bootlegger, philanthropist. Yeah. She was many things to many people. Everything, yeah. So uh, this is like an honor to her. It's from the people that bring you Rabbit Hole. This is a whole new line for them. We have two different expressions. We have a tequila finished one. We have a double oaked one, correct? Toasted double oak barrel. And um, Don. So, quick story. Don, my friend, Don Williams, a bourbon fool. The sales guys show up to show me this, and you know, they show me this article written about Mary Dolling, and I look at the article, and it's written by Don Williams. <laughs> so, they're out selling their product using your information. How's that make Small you feel? Small world. Yes, Small absolutely. World. So, um, so, to clarify, I have tasted these because they did do the Michigan release at my restaurant at Charlie's. So, um, but we just now received it in that I can bring it to the masses, as they say. So, Don, tell me about Mary Dowling. Obviously, you're the expert on it, according to these guys. Mary Dowling is one of the most significant female uh, females in the whiskey world to me. Uh, she, her, and her husband. Uh, got involved in distilling early on in Kentucky. They were successful. And the reason I have this bottle here is they were partners in the Waterville Frazier Distillery, and this is one of their original bottles. Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah, stamped Waterville Frazier. Uh -huh. So they were doing well, and then lo and behold, Prohibition hits. And Mary Dowling was not able to get a medicinal permit. There was only about six of them issued. She was not able to get one. She probably didn't pay the right government official Of off. course, yeah, yeah. And so what she did is she had a plan. She hid a lot of the booze in her home in Kentucky, and she started bootlegging it. Well, she got caught, and eventually her solution was to break down her distillery, move it to Mexico. She partnered with a Mexican family, which was Mexican law at that point, and the best part about it is she hired two of the Beam family members to break down the distillery and move it to Mexico. Because Beams are everywhere, dude. That, that's right. That's right. So she was a successful distiller in Mexico. And back then, don't forget, bourbon could be made in Mexico. It, you know, it, there was no United States affiliation at that right. point. Right, right. So she was selling such good bourbon across the border that none other than Pappy Van Winkle asked her if she could stop because she was affecting their legitimate medicinal sales. Right. So she was a wonderful woman, came back into K Kentucky after Prohibition, got into the distilling world, but then became a philanthropist and started one of the most successful hospitals in the Kentucky region. She really is an amazing person. Right. So I don't know that you mentioned it, but her husband died like young, right? So Very she kind of did this on her own. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing is the, it's rumored, and I don't know if this is true, but the, the Bourbon Act was kind of because of her. One of the reasons is that because she was making stuff in Mexico and calling it bourbon that they made this law saying you had to be in the United States to be bourbon. It, it would have definitely been referenced in, in the arguments for sure. Yes, for sure. So, so in honor of that, they have taken this first uh, bourbon and aged it in tequila barrels. It, they have. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it open. Want to tell us a little bit about this one, Don? So it's it's 93 proof, 70% corn, 25% rye, 5% malted barley. And this is basically the original Mary Dowling whiskey recipe. Oh, wow. So th this is basically the same thing she would have made, you know, before Prohibition, 
slightly after Prohibition. Yeah. But it has the tequila finish. And the tequila was aged in Appalachian oak barrels, which I'm not sure what that actually means, but they designate I'm going to guess they're from West Virginia. Yeah. I'm just going to say they're West Virginia oak but barrels. Let's the, go with for that. For the sake of this conversation. Yes, I think absolutely. If there's nothing more Appalachian than West by God, Virginia. So but we'll go with that. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, let's try this. Wow, that's better than I remember it. That's really, really creamy, good, easy drinking. So a lot of the whiskeys that are matured with tequila, the tequila t tends to dominate. This, you can still tell, is a straight bourbon whiskey. Oh, yeah. With a little bit of tequila. Yeah. Okay. The tequila gives it that, I think, gives it kind of that creamy feel. Like, that. Uh, yeah. So, wow. if you're a tequila fan, you're going to love this. If you're a bourbon fan that likes to try different expressions, you're going to love it. It, it really kind of hits a couple different sweet spots. And I'll tell you what, at 93 proof, it doesn't even drink that strong to me. No, no, it, it has a great flavor to it. Yeah, yeah. Now, this one's the big dog. This is the double toasted double oak. And um, I'm not seeing it. What's the proof on this 107. one? 107. So 107, yes. Yep. So this one is slightly different. 65 corn, 25 wheat. So it's a wheat. 10% oh, okay. multivirus. It's a wheater. All and, right. And to tell you the truth, I didn't actually, I tried this, and I actually didn't realize it was a wheated bourbon until I did a little bit more prep. Okay. And yeah, because I don't think they mentioned that. They probably did. So it's got great color. We were drinking. So we may, I, don't, I don't remember great everything color. they talked about. It does have an amazing color to it. Uh, do we know how old any of these are? Well, you, you know, I didn't really pick up age statements from okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but these are going to take the industry by storm because of their uniqueness and because of the Mary Dowling story. Yeah. Not to mention Rabbit Hole are very good marketers and promoters. Yeah, absolutely. So... Now, I remember you telling me something about this. So, so I will tell you, to me, this bourbon's a little hot. And if you add a drop of water to it, it turns into the most amazing bourbon. It makes the most dramatic change I've ever seen. And I remember you telling me that? Yes. Uh, but uh, the one thing that I think is very unique about this is the first barrel that it matures in is heavy toasted and a char number three, which is a pretty strong char. Yeah, right. The secondary barrel is only lightly toasted with a char one, which is very light for yeah. the bourbon universe. Oh, yeah. And I think that that adds to giving it this unique kind of ambiance, this, this unique kind of flavor that is different. Yeah, yeah. No, it's different. It's smooth. But I'm going to tell you, your Charlie's, Put a drop of water, and it's amazing how much it changes. So, you know, a lot of I've done that with a lot of whiskeys, and they have a subtle change. This makes a dramatic change. So, I probably would have bottled this at a little lower proof if it was me. I'm just well, saying. You know, but if you think about it, the 107 proof is for the high proof drinkers like oh, yeah. myself. Yeah. And then, if you put a large cube in there, oh, it's perfect on a cube. Yeah. Or, or a couple splashes yeah, absolutely. of. Uh, Branch water, like yeah. Jimmy Russell would say, yeah, it's going to be fantastic, and it's going to change it and mature. Completely opens up and changes. So anyway, but it's fantastic as it is. It's really good. A lot of people really like it. It's a little hot for me, but um, you know, put it over a ball at Charlie's, it'd be fantastic. So and one more thing, Charlie. What's that? Beautiful bottles. Oh, dude, the bottles are amazing, man. They, those are cool. Yeah, definitely stands out in the shelf. So. They've, uh, they've done a great job with the product, the brand, everything looks good about it. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a, it's going to be something you're going to be hearing about in the future. And I'm sure there's, um, well, they told us they're actually planning on building a Mary Dowling house right beside Rabbit Hole. So in Louisville In Louisville. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a brand to watch. It's going to be up and coming. I'm sure there'll be other expressions. I'm sure there'll be more stuff, but they've, uh, they hit it out of the park with the first two. So wish them nothing but success. I can't wait to see what happens in the future.
And if you want to hear a little bit more about Mary Dolling, go to bourbonfool.com and search Mary Dolling. Because that's what they did. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Charlie, good choices. Absolutely.